While some directors approach their work with a sense of nuanced restraint, there are others who like a more gung-ho, erratic, oft insane approach with their films. In fact, certain directors have made a career for themselves off the back of how much they're willing to go against expectation in the most bizarre and unbelievable of ways. It's some of those directors that the attention is on here, with the spotlight being shone on times when, regardless of us thinking otherwise, a filmmaker really did go to an extreme length to either shock us, baffle us, or to make us shrink into our seats due to the sheer cringeworthy nature of what's playing out on our screens. For the films featured here, they absolutely caught audiences off guard, with some doing it in a great way and others in a, well, not so great way. Either way, the one guarantee is that at least the scenes in question were, for better or worse, memorable. As a heads up, there are major spoilers for Roland Emmerich's currently in cinema's Moonfall featured at the end of this list. So with all that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture, and here are 10 insane movie moments you couldn't believe directors actually went there. Number 10. Ed Furlong returns as John Connor, just to get immediately terminated. When it was announced by producer James Cameron that Ed Furlong would be returning to the Terminator franchise for 2019's Terminator Dark Fate, many were eager to see Furlong back as the saviour of mankind, John Connor. Frustratingly, Furlong's return to the series was merely to do one day's worth of motion capture work in order for Movie Magic to create an accurate John for a flashback sequence in 1998, three years after the events of Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Within less than two minutes of Dark Fate's runtime, John Connor was was dead. For longtime fans of Terminator 2 and of Furlong, it was a gut punch to see the 13-year-old John fatally gunned down at a Guatemalan beach hut by a T-800 unit. After waiting 18 years to see Furlong back in a role that had also been taken on by Nick Stahl, Thomas Decker, Christian Bale and Jason Clark, this was such a letdown as Dark Fate did what appeared to be the unthinkable. Since the first Terminator movie in 1984, audiences have been conditioned that the adult John Connor is the person who leads you humanity in its war against Skynet. As such, John's death simply wasn't possible in the established narrative of the franchise. Number 9. The Rescue of Nova Sets the Stage for the Sharknado Franchise Granted, the six-movie Sharknado franchise is famed for taking things to insane new levels of unbelievability, but there was a time when the title Sharknado was synonymous with merely sharks in tornadoes. At the time of Anthony C. Ferrante's first film, that concept itself sounded nuts enough, but in hindsight that now feels relatively tame when compared to the direction the series ended up going in, not least in how the franchise would head up into space and back through time. So, with plenty of sharks being in plenty of tornadoes in the original Sharknado back in 2013, it came as a legitimate forehead-slapping shock to see how that first picture handled the She's Not Really Dead rescue of Cassie Skerbo's Nova. With Nova in a helicopter, she'd fall out of said chopper and land right in the mouth of a shark. And that was it. Nova was one of the many deaths of the movie, right? Nah. Instead, she'd be miraculously saved by Finn a solid 15 minutes later. As the sharks are defeated, one last airborne shark plummets towards the ground. Ever the hero, Finn dives into the shark's mouth with his trusty chainsaw to hand. Wouldn't you know it, as the character cuts his way out of the carcass of the apex predator, he emerges with the totally unscathed Nova in his arms. With that, Sharknado totally went there, and the stage was set for further insanity to follow in the franchise. Number 8. Quentin Tarantino opts to off Adolf Hitler in Inglorious Bastards when Quentin Tarantino decided to tackle the topic of World War II in 2009, there was a sense of intrigue at how factually accurate QT's Inglorious Bastards would end up being. Centered on a Jewish-American group of Nazi hunters, the sheer premise of the picture meant that Adolf Hitler had to be at least referenced even if he wasn't featured. Featured Hitler would indeed be, and Tarantino went full Tarantino by deciding to show Adolf brutally murdered by Eli Roth's Donny Donowitz as the film raced to a close. It takes a bull filmmaker to rewrite history in such a way, especially when it involves such an extremely sensitive time in history, but Tarantino is nothing if not ballsy. Similarly, Quentin really went there ten years later with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. This time it was 1969 Los Angeles and the infamous slaughter of the pregnant Sharon Tate and friends at the hands of the Manson family cult. In terms of Tarantino of course putting his own spin on this, the murderous Manson plan is thwarted by Leonardo DiCaprio's flamethrower-wielding Rick 
Dalton, Brad Pitt's Cliff Booth, and Booth's trusty pooch Brandy. Likewise, once upon a time in Hollywood, earlier had Cliff get the better of Mike Moe's Bruce Lee in a fight sequence, something which certainly raised an eyebrow or two. Number 7. Boogie Nights reveals Dirk Diggler in all his glory. I am a big, bright, shining star. A line spouted at several points during Boogie Nights by Mark Wahlberg's Dirk Diggler. The final time we hear Dirk deliver his own personal pep talk is as Diggler showcases his marvelous member in all its glory. In Paul Thomas Anderson's 1997 picture, Wahlberg's character is shot to porn superstardom due to what lies between his legs. As an audience, we hear about the size of it, we see other people's reaction to seeing it, and it even served as the gateway into Dirk making a better life for himself. Well, until Diggler ended up drowning in the excesses of the industry, losing everything as his drug habit spiralled out of control. Despite being hinted at, you never really expect Boogie Nights to actually show the instrument that has served Dirk so well. Sure, there'd be plenty of nudity across the movie's 155 minute runtime, but part of the mystique about Diggler's Sir uh, Johnson is that you don't get to see what is positioned throughout the film as somewhat of a mythical beast. Then, with mere seconds of the film left, out it pops for all to see. Yet Paul Thomas Anderson really did go there. Number 6. The Death of Optimus Prime a truly harrowing sight for any young viewers upon a first watch, the death of Optimus Prime in Transformers the movie was the stuff of utter nightmares. This shocking moment from Nelson Shin's 1986 picture would be the equivalent of Disney killing off Mickey Mouse, or The Simpsons killing off Homer, or Pokemon killing off Pikachu, or Thundercats killing off Lion O, or SpongeBob SquarePants killing off… well, you get the point. Transformers the movie sets its stool out early, with a handful of Autobots brutally murdered by Megatron and his nefarious deception. Decepticons. While a later battle between our heroes and villains has Megatron getting the advantage over longtime rival Optimus Prime, nobody at the time of a first watch would ever think that the film could possibly kill off Prime. Shockingly, that was indeed what happened. After a battle that left both Optimus and Megatron with fatal damage, the leader of the Autobots dies on an operating table after the colour literally drains out of him. Of course, in reality, this was done as a way to erase the old guard of the Greater Transformers franchise and introduce a slew of new characters who could make for shiny new toys to shield the kids of the day. Number 5. Jared beats up his childhood bully in Eagle vs Shark while it took Thor Ragnarok and Jojo Rabbit to make him a mainstream favourite, writer-director Taika Waititi had quietly been wowing audiences since 2007. It was in 07 that the New Zealander served up his debut feature film, The Brilliant Eagle vs Shark. A quirky romantic comedy, this picture had Lauren Horsley's shy, meek Lily desperately trying to get the attention of Jermaine Clement's awkward, nerdy, arrogant Jared. Full of the charm that would become a staple of Waititi's work, Eagle vs Shark so often often has a genuine sense of cringe to it, in a good way, whenever Jared is on screen. Selfish, self-serving, and an overall douchebag to those close to him, this all culminates when he finally gets to confront his childhood bully after all these years. Throughout the movie, Clement's character makes anonymous calls to said bully, Dave Fane's Eric, and threatens him with lines like, justice is waiting for him. Playing into the narrative of Eagle vs Shark, it's this want for justice that sees Jared return to his hometown with Lily in tow as he seeks revenge on Eric. After Jared gets his family and friends together to watch this much-hyped fight, it's revealed Eric is now disabled and in a wheelchair. A few seconds of silence follow, as you think that surely Jared can't do what you think he's about to do. He does indeed do that, which is to attack Eric with nunchucks. Even then, Eric gets the better of his longtime rival and Jared runs off in embarrassment. Number 4. Space Joke Becomes a Reality for the Fast and Furious Franchise some have long said that the Fast and Furious franchise has become a parody of itself, and that was never more the case than when Fast and Furious 9, aka F9 The Fast Saga, aka F9, aka the most recent outing of this utterly dumb series, took a long-standing joke and made it into a reality. That joke was that the next obvious move for the franchise was to take the action to space. We all chuckled at the sheer stupidity of that concept, with it being something that was surely too outlandish even for this admittedly nuts illogical set of movies. Well, F9 director Justin Lin decided to take that joke and run with it. The bulk of Fast and Furious 9 thankfully does take place on Earth, of course with a bunch of ridiculous forehead-slapping action sequences, but there is one sequence where the film takes place in the stars. With some assistance from Sean, Twinkie and Early, the film launches Roman and Tej into space in a rocket-powered Pontiac Fiero. 
Yeah, for real. This is all part of a plan to stop Otto's Project Ares satellite from making it into orbit and corrupting anything on the planet that's run by computer code. So many questions, so little time. Number 3. The Twisted Torture of Tim Drake in Batman Beyond Return of the Joker While Batman the Animated Series was a revolutionary show that holds up as a magnificent depiction of the caped crusader and his world, one thing the series couldn't do was have any of its nefarious schemes ever come off. Like such shows before and since, the restrictions placed on this series meant that the rogues of the peace could make all kinds of threats, but the Dark Knight would always find a way to triumph. As such, fans of Batman the Animated Series had seen the Joker promise to do all kinds of heinous things to Gotham City, yet the Clown Prince of Crime would always be foiled before any anything truly terrifying could happen. Then there came 2000's Batman Return of the Joker movie. Tied to the future set Batman Beyond cartoon, this feature film saw the Harlequin of Hate reappear in the 2039 landscape of Neo-Gotham. As the tale unravels, we get a flashback detailing the death of the Joker years prior, and we also find out why Tim Drake, the former Robin, decided to get out of the superhero game. To this day, this flashback remains utterly chilling and absolutely unsettling. This movie releases the shackles from the Joker and has him in genuinely disturbing form. Here we see the captured Robin tortured by the jester of genocide and eventually groomed into Joker Jr. But the real anguish comes when the corrupted Tim suffers a breakdown after murdering Mr. J in cold blood. Number 2. Basic Instinct's Interrogation Scene Paul Verhoeven's Basic Instinct was billed as an erotic thriller, and it most certainly lived up to that label. In the years after the film's 1992 release, the one moment that people still forever remember from the movie is the scene where Sharon Stone's Catherine Trammell is interrogated over the murder of her boyfriend, former rock star Johnny Boz. Here, Stone plays up her sex appeal as Trammell plays the police officers in question like a fiddle. As they hang on her every word and every movement, the detectives creepily lurch and exchange glances with one another as Catherine answers their questions in a sultry, seductive, sarcastic manner. With Wayne Knight's John Corelli getting particularly hot under the collar during all of this, Basic Instinct does the one thing you thought it wouldn't dare do. Yes, it has Sharon Stone slowly uncross and cross her legs in a way that absolutely, unequivocally confirms that her character opted not to wear underwear on that day. So shocking was this moment, it has been spoofed time and time again over the decades, most impressively in Loaded Weapon 1's gratuitous beaver shot sequence. Number 1. Moonfall's Insane Twist Roland Emmerich is never one to hold back when it comes to his movies. For Emmerich, so often bigger and louder has been his way of approach. After all, this is the director behind the likes of Independence Day, The Day After Tomorrow, and 1998's god-awful take on Godzilla. More recently, the German director brought sci-fi disaster flick Moonfall to the silver screen. And in typical Roland Emmerich fashion, there's a revelation in the movie that caused audiences' collective jaws to drop. How did the filmmaker battle us this time out? Why, he'd reveal that the moon is not real. Even by Roland's standards, this is pretty out there. In a screenplay Emmerich put together with Harold Klosser and Spencer Cohen, Moonfall explains how the moon as we know it is a creation of mankind's ancestors. Designed billions of years ago, the moon was meant to be an arc-like vessel intended to repopulate the dwindling numbers of mankind. Not just this, but the moon has been corrupted by a rogue AI which has now set the faux moon out of orbit and onto a collision course with Earth. Given how Moonfall only hit cinemas a matter of weeks ago, there's obviously no footage of the film's nuts revelation available online just yet. If you've not seen this latest Emmerich offering as of yet, trust us when we say the movie is as bonkers as it sounds. And that concludes our list. If you can think of any other examples, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.